to watch the latest from India Science, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon to get notifications on all the science related videos. Imagine entering into people's dreams, interacting with them. Imagine stealing their dreams. No, no, we won't do that. A recent study has raised hope that talking to people who are lucid dreamers could be used therapeutically to influence people's dreams so that they can better deal with trauma, anxiety and depression. Sleeping conversations might also help the dreamer solve problems, learn new skills or to get people's creative juices flowing. This has indeed a lot of potential. Are you wondering what could be the potential of this research? We'll tell you that in a bit. I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science has to offer. We talk about scientific developments that could stir your curiosity, zeal and passion. And in this episode, we will talk about sleeping conversations, octopuses that can see light with their arms and where is tons of plastic getting disposed of. So let's begin. Our first story today will transport you into the world of science fiction. Imagine entering into people's dreams, interacting with them and stealing their secrets. Does that sound familiar? Well, you must have watched Leonardo DiCaprio's enact this in the film Inception. Now, we're not saying stealing people's secrets is cool, but researchers have managed to make conversations with lucid dreamers, people who are aware that they're dreaming. The conversations involve a list of novel questions and maths problems. Scientists hope this technique will help people battling trauma in future. As reported by the American Association for Advancement of Science, the findings from four labs suggest people can receive and process complex external information while sleeping, thus challenging the very definition of sleep. Traditionally, sleep has been defined as a state in which the brain is disconnected from the outside world. But during lucid dreams, people are aware that they are dreaming. One in every two people has had at least one lucid dream. Although rare, this ability to recognize you are in a dream and even control some aspects of it can be enhanced with training. So, researchers conducted an experiment. They selected 36 participants and trained them for the NAP experiment. Then, slumber sessions were scheduled at different timings. Some at night, some when people would go regularly to bed and others early in the morning. Each lab used a different way to communicate with the sleeper from spoken questions to flashing lights. And the researchers told sleepers to signal that they had entered a lucid dream and answer questions by moving their eyes and face in particular ways, for example, by rolling their eyes three times to the left. And out of a total of 57 sleeping sessions, six individuals signaled they were lucid dreaming. The experiment they conducted provided a better way to study dreams, raising hope that this technique could be used in the future therapeutically to influence people's dreams so that they can better deal with trauma, anxiety and depression. Sleeping conversations might also help the dreamer solve problems, learn new skills or to get people's creative juices flowing. This has a lot of potential indeed. Well, for now, science is not stealing your secret, so you can relax now. And moving on to the next story, did you know that octopuses can see a light with their arms? Sounds astonishing, right? Well, scientists have found that when the eyes of the octopuses are in the dark and the arms of the octopus detect the light, the eight-armed creature pulls them close to their body. Octopuses generally have a poor sense of where their body is in space and this complex instinctive behavior might help protect their arms from the pincers of predators nearby that they might otherwise not sense. The experiment involved placing an octopus in a tank covered in an opaque black tarp. 
While the octopus was blindly feeling around for a food, the researchers would shine a bright light on the octopus's arm about 84% of the time. When they shone the light, the octopus would rapidly pull its arm away, suggesting that the octopus is able to sense and react to the light with its arms, even when they can't see the light with their eyes. Having established that, the octopus's arms can sense and react to light. The next step of the study was to explore what controls this reaction. Amazing, isn't it? And the researchers performed a few experiments. First, they illuminated different parts of the octopus's arm to determine the region most sensitive to light. They found that the tip of the arm was the most sensitive to it. Next, illuminated the arms of several octopuses. Then, when the scientists cut the muscles at the base of the arms, that differed the arm's retraction. Put together, the study suggests that the arm is sensing the light, sending a message to the brain through the nerves in the muscle, and the brain is telling the octopus to move the arm. Finally, when the researchers would shine the light on a piece of fish, the octopus would initially avoid the food before seemingly deciding to override the instincts and crap the fish anyway. The fact that the behavior of an octopus is not a reflex, but instead controlled by higher level cognition in the brain is fascinating, the researchers say, and fascinating it is indeed. And with that, we move on to our final story today. From fascinating, we move to worrying. Of the hundreds of millions of tons of plastic waste we produce each year, it's estimated that around 10 million tons enters the ocean. Roughly half of the plastics produced are less dense than water, and so they float. But scientists estimate that there are only about 0.3 million tons of plastic floating on the ocean surface. So where is the rest of it going? Finding out where all the missing plastic ends up can help us figure out which parts of the ocean are most affected by this type of pollution and where to focus cleanup efforts. But to do that, we need to be able to predict the pathways of different kinds of plastics, which require large teams of physicists, biologists and mathematicians working together. We already know that large pieces of plastic like bottles can float on the sea surface for years, if not centuries, taking a long time to break down. Currents, winds and waves can, after a journey of several years, bring them to the center of the ocean basins, where they accumulate in 1,000 kilometer wide circulating systems known as gyres, like an island of trash. But the fate of plastic fibers, perhaps the smallest plastic fragments to reach the oceans is more complex. Large fibers can break up over days and weeks into similar smaller pieces due to turbulence from breaking waves and ultraviolet radiation from the sun. These are called microplastics and they range in size from 5 millimeters to specks smaller than bacteria. Microplastics can be eaten by fish. It's estimated that one in three fish eaten by humans contain microplastics. Muddy rivers like the Ganga or the Amazon contain clays that settle rapidly when they come into contact with salty ocean water. Microplastics can thus be carried down by the settling clay. And microplastic waste comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes, including discs, rods and flexible fibers. A recent study found that non-spherical particles align themselves with the direction of the waves, which can slow the rate at which they sink. Lab experiments have further shown how the shape of each plastic particle affects how far it's transported. Less spherical particles are more likely to go further from the coast. And solving the mystery of the missing plastics is a science in itself. The ability of the waves to transport large microplastics faster than previously thought helps us understand why they are now found throughout the world's oceans, including the Arctic and around Antarctica. But finding the fiber that was pulled from your fleece is still more challenging than finding a needle in a haystack. Till this mystery is solved, let's all pledge not to dump plastics anywhere, but their rightful place in the recycle bins and contribute towards a cleaner and healthier world. And on that note, we wrap up this edition of Science Time. Stay safe, mask up, take care. Namaste. Mm -hmm.